Welcome back to another breakdown. Here we got another passage. This is a BB passage. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to read through the passage, how to, you know, look in these details, how to not get lost in the details. I'm going to show you guys how to interpret this figure. I'm going to show you guys how to make this passage make sense. And I'm also going to show you guys how to pick the best answer, where to highlight all the good stuff. Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric, and I'm on a mission to make sure this MCAS is easy as possible for you guys, because I know what it's like to be pre-med. You have a lot going on. The MCAT shouldn't be this crazy, hard, impossible beast test that you have to conquer. Okay, I'm here to show you that the MCAT is actually easier than you think. So, as always, guys, before I go ahead and break this passage down, make sure you read it on your own. So I'm going to scroll down here, pause it whenever you need to, read this on your own, and answer the questions on your own first, and then hear me break it down, okay? So this is question 23, this is 24, 25, and 26. Okay, cool. Let us begin. The flux of water across biological membranes is facilitated by transmembrane protein channels called aquaporins. Aquaporins passively transport water in response to osmotic gradients while excluding the movement of ions including protons okay i'm going to highlight what struck out at me and what i do not know about aquaporins well i know that they are involved in the flux of water i know that so i don't gotta highlight anything here i'm not highlighting anything in the first sentence what i am going to highlight is the this part here i didn't know that it excludes protons all right i didn't know that so I'm going to highlight it to make a little check in my head, thinking, okay, it excludes protons. Thus, they are highly important for cell volume regulation. One particular aquaporin, AQP5, has been a recent focus of study due to its involvement in cystic fibrosis and several other diseases. Okay, pretty easy, guys. We're zooming in on a specific aquaporin, AQP5. Let's see what happens. To better understand this topic, Researchers developed a mutant construct in human embryonic kidney cells, HEK, in which the serine 156 residue was replaced with glutamate. I'm highlighting this in case I have to go back to the passage and, you know, they ask me some type of amino acid question, similar to what's going on here, okay? I just took a peek at it. This mutation had been previously observed to have a phosphometic effect on the residue. Okay, phosphorylation mimicking effect. So the mutation had a phosphomimic effect. Membrane expression of AQP5 in these serine 156 uh, glutamate cells was compared to expression in wild type HE key cells. Researchers also assessed the effect of PKI 1422A mite and known PKA inhibitor. Okay, so they want to see what this PKA inhibitor does on both S156E and wild type cells. Figure one shows the measurements of expression performed after 30 minutes of inhibitor exposure. Okay, this paragraph here, you got a little details going on, a little, you know, inhibition, you know, expression, looking at different things here. What's going on is that they're simply looking at these aquaporin expression levels and they're seeing okay do we have more aquaporins when we use pka or do we have less aquaporins when we use pka All right? and the figure will tell us but we're not going to look at it yet and they also tell us what the mutant as well but we're not going to analyze this figure yet we're only going to analyze the figure when the question asks for it okay we can read the caption though that's fine Membrane expression of AQP5 in wild type and mutant HEK cells with or without PKA inhibition. Cool. The proper regulation of membrane protein abundance requires a delicate balance between two opposing processes. Translocation to and internalization from the membrane. All right. Translocation and internalization of AQP5 have been shown to be regulated by at least two factors. All right, whenever they give us a semicolon, guys, pay attention because they give us a direct uh, definition of something that's going on, okay? And that could be tested, so you got to pay attention here. The phosphorylation state of the S156 residue on the AQP5 protein, all right, that's what regulates the AQP5, and the signaling activity of both cyclic AMP and PKA. All right, so these two things here regulate AQP5. 
Don't get lost in the details, guys. Think about the, think about the, the bigger picture going on here. Interestingly, increased CAMP levels were observed to have a biphasic effect on the subcellular distribution of AQP5. Okay, what does that mean? Biphasic effect. With decreased expression in the plasma membrane in the short term, followed by an increase in membrane abundance in the long term. Okay, there's a lot of details going on here. So in my notebook, I'm just going to write something really quick to, just to kind of remember what's going on here, okay? I'm going to write increased CAMP levels equals what? Equals what? Equals decreased expression in the short term followed by increased memory and abundance in the long term. Okay, so I'm just going to write this just to put it in here. C-A-M-P, real quick, boom, equals what? Equals decrease in the short term? Yeah, decrease expression in the short term. Decrease short term expression, okay? This also equals increase in long term expression, Okay, make some no quick notes for you guys so you don't get lost in the details. This is quick. This is tiny. This is no more than like one sentence. One sentence is way too long. It should be words that if somebody else looked at it, it wouldn't make sense to them. Okay, it should be quick. Boom equals this equals this. All right. This functional trafficking of AQP5 has been implicated in several human disease states, including serjogens, bronchitis, and cystic fibrosis. Okay, cool. Passage. Got some details in here. Classic BB passage with, you know, crazy details in them. Trying to make you get lost, but we don't get lost here. We realize that the MCAT is actually easier than you think, okay? The MCAT is a big, is a dog with a big bark, no bite, okay? They try to bark at you, they try to scare you with all these details, but really when you look at the question, you're like, really? That's easy, okay? That's basically the MCAT. If you come in with that mindset, you're going to see and believe and, you know, provide evidence for that mindset of, hey, like, it's actually easier than you think. Okay, the questions are the easy part. Researchers later isolate another residue that tends to be phosphorylated at position 259 of the AQP5 protein. If they desire to replicate the results described in the passage with a phosphomimetic mutant construct, this construct is most likely to be what? Well, this construct is most likely to be the construct that we made in the uh, passage, in the experiment. Okay. And what was the construct? The construct was a serine replaced with a glutamate, right? It was a S with a 156E. Serine at position 156 is replaced with a glutamate. So we look at the one that's most similar to this. Threonine at 259 replaced with aspartate. We have an amino acid with an OH, amino acid with OH. We have a acidic amino acid. We have acidic amino acid. A is very similar to this. Alanine, no. Uh, glutamate here, yeah, but the first one is a f um, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine doesn't have the OH group. All right, it has a ring, but not an OH, so this is wrong. And then again, glycine in this one is wrong. Okay, so the answer is A here. That's the one that's most similar. It has both the first amino acid and the second amino acid. Okay, so 23 is A. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments below, guys. Comment down anything you need help on. Always just comment it down below. You know, feel free to ask for help. 24. The results in figure one and the information in the passage most strongly support which of the following conclusions. Okay, so if they talk about figure one, we go to figure one and we find out what figure one's telling us. We make our own conclusion and then that's going to... Um, we make our own conclusion and we look for the answer that supports our own conclusion made. And we are confident in our own conclusion that we make. All right. So let's make a conclusion right now and be confident about it. Boom. Just like that. All right. What do we got here? We got relative membrane expression. All right. And on the x-axis, we got the aquaporin, the wild type, aquaporin with the mutant. Black is inhibited. And then the white is PK inhibition. Cool. Let's look at the control first. Always look at the control first. Wild type control. All right, we got low levels of membrane expression of the aquaporin, but when we introduce PKA, when we oh, when we inhibit PKA, we have more aquaporins in the membrane. Okay. When we inhibit PKA, more aquaporins. Let's look at this one, the mutant. Same thing. 
when we inhibit PKA, more aquaporins. Okay. This also means, if you want to take the opposite of what I just said, this also means that when there is phosphorylation, okay, remember, PKA is protein kinase A. So if we're inhibiting protein kinase A, that means we don't have phosphorylation. Another way to say this is that when we don't have phosphorylation, we have an increase in membrane expression. All right. The opposite of that is saying, hey, if we have phosphorylation, okay, if we have phosphorylation, let's say an increase in phosphorylation, this means that instead of having an increase in membrane expression, we're going to have a decrease in membrane expression. So phosphorylation is equal to a decrease in aquaporin expression. Okay. There, we just interpreted it. Now let's see what answer choice goes with our conclusion. Phosphorylation of S156 by protein kinase A promotes the immediate localization of AQP5 to the plasma membrane. In my notes here, I said when we have phosphorylation, we have a decrease in aquaporin expression. If we have localization to the plasma membrane, that means we're going to have an increase in uh, membrane expression of the aquaporin. So this is wrong. Okay, phosphorylation will decrease the localization of AQP5 to the plasma membrane. B, phosphorylation of S156 promotes the internalization of AQP5 in the short term. Internalization, um, let me see, promotes the internalization of AQP5 in the short term. Does internalization mean internalizing it in the plasma membrane or internalizing it away from the plasma membrane? Let's see. Okay, translocation to and internalization from the membrane. Okay, so internalization means decreasing membrane expression. And this is true, but let's keep going, okay? Protein kinase A promotes the internalization of AQP5 in the short term. Oh, okay, C is the answer, not B, okay? We don't care about S156. <clears throat> That's completely different protein. We're talking about the mutant here. Mutant is S156E. They're talking about S156. If this said S156E, then it'd probably be right. But S156 is a protein we don't even want, <laughs> okay? We're talking about the mutant here. The whole thing's about the mutant, not the regular S156, okay? You have to make that distinction. You guys have to have the confidence to say, hey, MCAT, like, hey, answer choice. You are trying to trick me here. Okay, this is a answer choice that's not even relevant to the whole entire experiment okay s156 is not relevant we care about the construct so i like c way better than b okay because literally it says it also protein kinase a in the experiment 30 minutes of exposure to protein kinase a stimulates the internalization of aqp5 a process that is upregulated when s156 is phosphorylated a process that is upregulated when s156 Okay, again, they're talking about S156. Okay, we care about the S156 construct. All right, so C is correct. It's the best answer choice here. Let me take a sip of water. All right, which of the following enzymes should the researchers add to the cell samples if they want to reverse the general catalytic effects of protein kinase A? An enzyme, <clears throat> kinase adds phosphates, okay? transfers phosphate groups, phosphatase gets rid of phosphate, phosphate groups. So we're just gonna click the one with the phosphatase. This adds a phosphate, this is isomerization reaction, uh, removes a phosphate, which is good. This is uh, dehydrogenase is always involved in like oxidation reduction reactions, okay? A rapid mechanism is thought to govern the localization of AQP5 in response to changes in extracellular osmolarity. If this mechanism is independent of both PK activity and S156 phosphorylation, which the following will most likely be observed. Okay, you can kind of get the answer to this without looking at the answer choices. Okay, think about what an osmolarity, an increase in osmolarity would do, or a decrease in osmolarity would do. All right, A, HEK cells exposed to the most hypotonic conditions will display the greatest degree of AQP5 membrane delocalization 
allowing water to flow out of the cells. All right. If it's hypotonic to the HEK cells, that means we have less solute concentration outside the cell than inside. And if you have that, water will flow in the cells. So this is wrong. If it says flow into the cells, that would be right. HEK cells exposed to the most hypotonic conditions will display the greatest degree of AQP5 membrane localization, allowing water to flow into the cells. Correct. Hypotonic, water is going to flow in. Isotonic, flow out. No. Again, isotonic, wrong. The answer is B. Let's keep going. Oh, and that's it, guys. So let's check if we got all of them right. Let's check. 23 was A. 24 was C. This was C. And this was B. All of them correct, guys. As always, guys, if you are interested in working one-to-one -one with me inside MCAT University, just go to the comment section and click on the link. I will make sure you 100% hit your target score. I've done it plenty of times with a bunch of pre-meds, and you're no different. Okay? I've seen constant same mistakes with so many pre-meds, and once they fix those mistakes, it's it's almost like a guarantee to hit your target score. Okay? The MCAT is not hard. Comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep watching these videos, guys. They're really good practice, okay?